Okay, we're going to take a question now, so go ahead. Okay, uh, Here's my question. We were talking about levels uh, of the Christian, and even before being a Christian, when people start to believe and then become converted. And the Bible refers to that uh, about being born again. People cannot get into the kingdom of heaven without being born again. So. Uh, how does it work? Uh, basically, when it uh, when it happens, should be any concern uh, by the leadership of the church in relation to that? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, so, it's really how do we know at what point in time a person is born again? And some people have a very dramatic conversion experience where they it's very clear they knew that somehow God spoke to their heart. They made a decision and. Their life began to change and it's pretty clear cut. A lot of people, it's not so clear cut. They start out and, and maybe they had sort of very vague prayer to God, Jesus help me, or was that their conversion? Or was it later on somewhere when it became clear to them that they were sinful and that Christ died for forgiveness and so on? And I think sometimes, frankly, we don't always know from a human side of the story. God knows. The real question for me is, is that person continuing to move, if we use this scale, continuing to sort of move up the scale, growing in their walk with Christ? So in other words, I may not know exactly when a person sort of hits that point of being born again. Um, they may have made some sort of profession, but they just didn't really understand the gospel or there wasn't a true sense of faith and trust in Christ. We don't always know, but God heard that prayer. He, he worked in the person's life. At some point, they became a Christian, and then it starts becoming evident that that person is, uh, Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruit. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, uh, will be with me in that day. And so, so seeing some evidence of a changed life is going to be important. And so, no, we won't always know exactly what point. Was it when a person prayed a certain kind of prayer? Um, maybe, maybe not. But is there a change of life? It probably becomes really more of the question in terms of our church life is, at what point would you baptize a person? Um, do you baptize a person relatively quickly after they've made a profession of faith? Uh, some advocate that. Some say, well, there should be a time of teaching and seeing if that person is really growing and having some kind of life change before you baptism, baptize them. Uh, so there's, there's different theories on that. In the New Testament, they seem to baptize people pretty quickly after they made some kind of profession of faith. And the main thing is that we continue to work with people and help them grow. And so I personally am not going to worry too much about the exact point in time. And of course there are people, uh, and we see this in the Bible, who with relatively little preparation do have those dramatic conversion experiences. The Philippian jailer. Presumably a, a Roman soldier, a pagan, who had no Jewish background, no understanding of the scripture, had a pretty dramatic conversion. But uh, that seems to be, in most cases, more the exception. And I know people who've had that kind of experience, but most people, it's more of a process. And again, a lot more could be said on this, and I'm sure in evangelism courses, you spend a lot more time talking about that process that we just don't have time for. But in terms of church planting, I do want to emphasize this, that we're talking about loving people. We're talking about loving people. And that means we understand them. Remember when we we're talking about planning and research, we want to understand the people we're trying to reach. A lot of times that means understanding their belief systems, especially if we're reaching people who maybe they're atheists and they have arguments against Christianity. So loving people, as we said, means we under, want to understand them. You want to understand a person you love. And that was what we were talking about with our research, uh, especially if they're people who are, are, have no Christian background. Maybe they're atheists. They've got questions of why a person could even believe in God. Maybe they're, they're Hindu and they have a totally different understanding when you use the word God. We need to understand them so we can communicate with them and, and so we can show them love in a way that they can relate to developing relationships with them. We want to be able to build that kind of relationship that uh, shows we care about them, that they're not just an object of evangelism, but that we are people who really care about other people. 
So as I mentioned, the city of Ingolstadt, a third of the people were in sporting clubs. So where are we going to go to build relationships, to meet people? You've got to meet people. You can't just stay in your fortress if you're going to care about people that you want to share Christ with. We, in fact, in our church planning team in Ingolstadt, we encouraged everybody in that core team to get involved in some kind of community event. Now, in some places, Christians say, well, you know, Christians shouldn't get involved in secular clubs or, or activities that's going to somehow uh, taint your faith. Well, you do need to make sure that the Christians are kept strong. There can be temptations if you join certain groups of people. For sure that can happen. But that's a risk we take. We want to make sure Christians are strong so that when temptations arise, they resist it. But at the same time, being out there getting the salt out of the salt shaker and so in my case, I joined a sporting club. In another case, a person went to an, a retirement home and just read for people who, who couldn't read anymore, for elderly people, built relationships, showed kindness. We began doing uh, a, a monthly service in a prison and uh, just to, to show kindness and, and serve those people. We began to look for ways we could get connected in the community to build relationships, to show that we are not just Christians off in a little huddle on the side, but the, we want to be servants in the name of Christ to help this become a better community. And so you find ways to develop relationships with other people. And then compassion and felt needs ministries. And uh, again, it's, it's a natural part of our Christianity that cr the love of Christ is poured by the Holy Spirit into our hearts. And when we see people in need, we, we don't just sit back, coolly back and say, well, you know, that's a result of sin, too bad for them. <laughs> Christ saw people in need and he was moved with compassion. And he reached out. He, he healed people who were sick. He, he cast out demons. He, he cared for people. Whether they converted or not, and a lot of them didn't. Remember the 10 lepers, only one came back to say thank you. And so we care for people, and, and it's just a part of our, our God's work in our hearts that, that we show compassion. That may be a ministry to orphans. It may be a ministry to people who are unemployed. It may be a food kitchen. Uh, there are just many, many ways that we begin to show the love of Christ to our community, where we may not receive anything in return for it. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com.